Right, so a story I'd missed from back in October, covering how Israel weaponizes food and water into Gaza, has come to my attention. And this came up then as supply trucks and humanitarian aid as trying to get into Gaza and might actually shed some light as to why they struggled at first to do so when they were being held up at the Rafa border crossing in Egypt, you might recall. They were also targeted after getting into Gaza. And we've seen footage of Israeli Defence Force soldiers seizing aid intended for Palestine and also desecrating it. And what has come to my attention is some video footage from a Netanyahu ally called Revital Gottlieb, Tally for short, a member of his Likud party and a member of the Israeli Knesset, where she's basically raving to a crowd why it is important that the people of Gaza be starved and thirsted for the good of Israel. Right, so food and water supplies into Gaza have been problematic in no small part thanks to Israeli forces and as a result there have been huge problems with hygiene, with sanitation, disease is running rife in Gaza right now. The markets are barren, there's no commercial goods getting in. Before the war some 500 trucks a day of supplies were going into Gaza and that's fallen to barely 100 according to a Channel 4 investigation. People are literally dying of hunger and thirst right now. Footage has cropped up of a member of Benjamin Netanyahu's Likud party in light of that, saying why this is necessary, though. She thinks this situation is right and good and exactly as things are meant to be in order to benefit Israel. And she has quite the list of reasons as to why that is, which might seem right and good and proper to her, but should be seen as completely depraved to everyone else. She made a big shouty speech aimed at her own government, no less, to not break the siege on Gaza that had begun on October 7th. She said, and for the government itself, if you decide to end the siege, to break the siege, it will be, in my opinion, a terrible decision. Because without hunger and thirst amongst the Gaza population, we will not be able to recruit collaborators. We will not be able to recruit intelligence. We will not be able to bribe people with food, with drink, with medicine, in order to achieve intelligence. And we know that finding the hostages is a super important goal of the war. So if you broke the siege, don't give up and tell us Biden, no, you need to explain your position. Don't use Biden as an excuse to break the siege. Don't break the siege or we won't be able to bribe Gazans to spy for us and work for us with these basic necessities like food, water and medicine, weaponizing the basics. Won't you think of the hostages, she wails, but this was before Israel ended up shooting some thinking they were going to be rescued. And of course, don't get me started again on those killed as Hamas tried to taking them hostage under Hannibal directives. Tally Gottlieb is quite the delight, isn't she? On the 10th of October, just three days into Israel's retaliation for Hamas's incursion and hostage taking, Tally Gottlieb wanted her government to drop a nuclear bomb on the Strip not realising, apparently, it would appear, that doing so would render not only the very small Gaza Strip uninhabitable, but most of Israel too. She put out a tweet saying, Jericho Missile! Jericho Missile! Strategic Alert! Before considering the introduction of forces! Doomsday Weapon! This is my opinion! May God preserve all our strength! She's a lawyer! She should be smart enough to know that, you'd think. But she clearly isn't. She worked for the State Department in Tel Aviv, apparently primarily defending people accused of sex crimes. One infamous case saw her take to Twitter, again, following the conviction of the attacker of a 14-year-old girl, to call the girl and her testimony distorted. She really is charming. I can't imagine what drew her to Netanyahu's brand of politics, truly. In fact, attacking others really does seem to be her trademark. She's even gone after Genocide Joe and her own government just last month, criticising him and them again on the subject of delivering aid to Gaza. And again, she took to social media to do it, saying, President Biden, you were invited to my DMD to share with me the delays and alarms sponsored by the fuel that you ordered to bring into Gaza. And now cabinet members come to your senses and stand firm in the face of the delusional demands of the US that preserve Hamas's power to shoot at us. And before you tell me the fuel is regulated, I declare to you that there is zero fuel regulation in Gaza. Zero. Well, there probably should be, though, shouldn't there? How many spies is a fuel truck worth to you, then, Tally? This is far-right re rhetoric. It's no wonder the likes of Itamar Ben-Gavir were not along in agreement with you, bleating it'll all go to Hamas. But above all else, you have to remember, she's in the ruling party, the Likud party of Netanyahu. She's one of his. A party that couldn't form a majority itself and had to go into coalition with even worse elements in order to form an administration. Those like Tali Gottlieb, for whom Netanyahu isn't going far enough, 
will have been emboldened by that. And so screaming speeches, public speeches, and banging on benches demanding the Gazans be starved shows just how depraved some of those Netanyahu is in government with are, even before he brings in the far right to add to them. Is it any wonder there's no chance of a two-state solution and people are emboldened to say it now, when this is the attitude they've got? At what point do you stop using food and water as weapons against Gaza then? When Hamas is destroyed? Never. It's in breach of international law, again, just add it to the ever-growing list. Let's not forget how this Israeli administration loved to preach of morality as well, despite all this, in the face of all of this. The Israeli Defense Force is the most moral army in the world as they celebrate shooting kids and targeting schools and hospitals. But is it any wonder they are like that when the words of Tali Gottlieb are what passed for morality in their government? In Netanyahu's Likud party. Let's remember this is a population of 2.3 million people. The likelihood of living to a ripe old age in Gaza is so remote but half the population are actually under 18. They are children. Starve them, she says. That's moral. That's tactical. That benefits Israel. Let's starve kids. This isn't just a war crime. This isn't just nasty rhetoric that we've come to expect by Israeli figures. This is just downright evil. This isn't moral. It makes the Hunger Games look moral. Again, it's a situation where you should try to put yourself in the shoes of those in Gaza, I think. You're a young parent. Just picture the scene. Lord knows there aren't many older ones, are there? And you've got kids to feed and you can't. You might get killed by bombs at any moment. If the IDF find you, they're as likely to kill you as anything else. And the choice put before you at that point is to betray others just like you in order to access food and water yourself and for your own for a day. But tomorrow it all begins again, doesn't it? Is that what she's saying? Because it sounds that way to me. There doesn't seem to be much of an incentive or a gain for Gazans here. But here's the thing, though. If people like Tali Gottlieb could leave their personal hatred for the Palestinians at the door, they would know that this is a stupid war tactic as well. It achieves nothing. It is just cruel. If they wanted people to betray Hamas in Gaza, they'd be better off treating them like kings. That would be a better way of doing it, wouldn't it? Give them all the things that Hamas can't. The food, the water, the clothes, the medicine. More carrot, less stick would be more effective. So what this actually shows is this has nothing to do with Hamas, really. Nothing to do with rescuing hostages, either. They are just an excuse. What people like Tali Gottlieb really want, they aren't completely just delusional and stupid people, is ethnic cleansing and the removal of the people of Gaza completely, which, of course, is exactly what Israel are now being taken to court by South Africa, facing accusations of genocide and ethnic cleansing. By battering the populace of Gaza, you just harden their resolve against you, creates more Hamas fighters, widens the divisions, and it all becomes ever more difficult to find an eventual peace resolution. So we have a population in Gaza where half of them are children, the situation is that they are being starved, and the World Food Programme has spelt out the extent of this already, bearing in mind as well, of course, that the Gaza Strip is the biggest open-air concentration camp on the planet, a de facto prison, so the people inside cannot go anywhere, and 9 out of 10 people right now, 90% of them, are eating less than one meal a day. They have nowhere to go, and they have nothing to eat. The Gaza Strip faces famine, and it's an engineered famine at that. Every single politician from ours here in the UK, to theirs, to America, to wherever, who isn't calling for a ceasefire, is sanctioning this. Starvation of a captive civilian population. The destruction of orchards and farmlands has gone underreported. That's intended to starve them. And it also has the consequence of even when all of this is said and done and the fighting ends, Gaza won't be able to produce its own food for a long time to come. World Food Programme bakeries have been targeted. Pop-up food access that was sent in destroyed. Just one out of the 25 of those that have been set up in Gaza are still operational. And of course then... All that's left is to go out in search of food amongst all of the chaos. And you're risking your life each and every time you try that. Starvation has been the most sinister weapon of choice that not a lot of attention has been brought to. But thanks to the big mouth of Tally Gottlieb, attention has now been drawn to it. And as far as our politicians here in the UK go, a lot of pressure is mounting on them too here. And none more so than Keir Starver, who is already referred to, of course, as Sir Kid Starver. His attitude towards a ceasefire to Gaza ought to give that nickname a whole new meaning. But in a recent and all too suspicion arising parliamentary selection, the son of his chief of staff happened to get selected to stand for his party, come the next general election, over the CEO of the charity Palestine Aid. 
a video I recommend you watch next. This guy is likely to be our next Prime Minister after all. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.